Hey everyone, it's Ashley from Upside Goods Company and the Candle Collective. And if you've been watching my channel, you're most likely a candle maker or aspiring candle maker and business owner that's interested in learning a bit more about the business and marketing side of candle making. But in some of my recent videos, you guys had mentioned that you would like me to make candles, which I just recently made a video on. But I think even beyond that, especially if you're going into the business of candle making, we really need to hone in on what testing means for making candles. Um, oftentimes I'll see people like, oh, I just started making candles and I'm ready to launch. And it absolutely sends like sheer panic down my spine because it's really not that easy. And testing is such a huge part of candle making, which quite honestly, if I knew that like ahead of time, I don't know, not that I'm like the faint of heart or not willing to work, but the testing is so just like nails on a chalkboard for me. And so candle making's not that easy, spoiler alert. But I wanted to take you guys along with me today just a little bit. Um, I'll just be kind of chiming in and out, trying to make little videos along the way of actually testing a candle. So I have a holiday scent that I have already burned twice. And I've actually realized that the wick that I put in it, which is the wick that I start out with all of my Aura Vessels, which I will link them below. Um, but this is an Aura Vessel from Wooden Wick Company, which is the main vessel I use in my line. And I determined that this wick is actually too big. The first burn was wonderful. I let it go for about an hour and a half. Um, came back another day. The second burn just started to have black soot at the top of the flame and just was a bit too much. And so you can tell that it's gone down about maybe half an inch, maybe even a quarter of an inch down. So my my indication on that is that it's only going to get hotter as the as the wax lowers down into the vessel. So I need to start to pivot. Couldn't find my word there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how I jiggle the wick out of there. And since this wick is already saturated in the fragrance oil and everything, um, it is a booster wick. What I'm going to do is actually remove the booster and then reinsert and reignite. So um, if you're not sure of when to do this or how to do this, if you know that the wick is wrong, um, if it's going to take a completely different wick with the melt pool that you have, what I do is I take the new wick and I basically like drown it in the hot wax so that it can get nice and saturated and coated. Um, and then I let extinguish the flame, let it completely solidify again. Then I wiggle the wick out and then put the new wick in that has already been coated in the fragrance and wax. So um, I'm gonna get this one out and I'm gonna reuse this one by removing the booster. This is definitely not my most flattering angle and the countertops that I don't really love, but <laughs> I'm trying to look past that for you guys for the sake of YouTube. I got some pliers here and basically what I'm going to do is I just grip the top part of the wick, not the burnt part because it's just going to break off and get really, really um, shy, for shallow. I don't know what the word. It's going to be hard to grip and you're going to have to dig into some wax. So you just want to kind of wiggle it back and forth. And with wooden wicks, I work with coconut soy wax. It's usually pretty easy. See, it's already ready. And then I just pull it out. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the booster because I do still think that this size of wick is correct. For those of you that are probably gonna ask, um, I always test with the 0 0.03, 0 0.625 from Wood & Wick Company. Um, I test always with the booster first, and then I remove the booster if I find that the flame is too big. So we're gonna give this one a go, and I will check back in with you guys in a little bit. I also wanted to tell you guys before I forget, um, I set the timer on my phone for 30 minute increments just to check in on the flame so I can go and multitask and do other things. Um, and then I move it into different rooms just to see how the scent throw or the hot throw is performing based on every hour, hour and a half. So just a little context. All right, guys. So I moved the candle up to my office. It's been about an hour and a half, I believe so. Um, if my math is suiting me correctly, I had to pop out and do a quick errand. But I wanted to show you guys where things are at, and it's actually looking pretty good. So here is the candle. Give you all the angles. This is the Bayberry from Wooden Wick Company. 
In an hour and a half, it's actually looking pretty good. Um, we're on our way to a full melt pull, as you can tell. These sides over here, they're pretty um, soft wax, so we'll probably be at a full melt pull in the next half an hour. The flame is a lot more in check than what it was. Um, there was a lot of black smoke that was coming up from the previous wick that had the booster on it. So I'm pretty happy about this. Um, I might have actually even put it in. No, it's good. But it looks like it's favoring one side. I actually am just even gonna rotate it. It's actually pretty warm in this room, so yeah. We're gonna see how it goes, um, but it looks pretty good. Winston for effect, because he's so cute. <laughs> we'll be back. I am checking in. It has been a little over three hours and we are looking really good. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you. Dare I say it, but so far we might have a winner. At a good melt pull at three hours, good size flame, nothing overwhelming, no smoke, white or black. It's looking pretty good and the whole room is completely filled. So feeling good about it. I'm gonna move it to another room and test it from there. So I will tell you guys that I'll probably let it burn for another hour or two unless I completely forget. Do as I say, not as I do. But all's looking well so far. I will burn this all the way down to the bottom just to make sure that that flame is gonna stay in check and that I don't actually need to go down to a 0 .02, 0 0.65 probably try it with a booster than without. That's usually my theory or school of thought when I'm trying to find the right wick. Um, it's good that I'm getting a nice scent throw. Um, I had a tin of this that I burned right at the two week mark and I couldn't really smell it in smaller areas. So this is giving me hope. We'll see how this all goes. I also wanted to tell you guys that um, most of my testing pretty much follows the same school of thought and I keep track of everything in Excel. And what I do in Excel is I have each line item and I let myself know because remembering is not one of my strong suits, but um, exactly how long I let each burn go. I mean, I every note that I can possibly take, I leave with this, including, you know, switched out the wax sw or switch out the wicks at what point I switched out to the wicks. And it really allows me to get more fine tuned with my testing. Because I am using the same wax and the same vessels, I usually know the arena in regards to hot throw and wicks where I need to go, whether it's up or down or somewhere in between, meaning that I remove the booster. I really hope that this helps you guys. I do wanna emphasize again the importance of saturating your wicks. So if you're going to, let's say, go from a 0.03 to a 0.02, so meaning replacing the wick entirely, you wanna make sure that you're saturating the next wick as best you can by making sure that it is primed, I guess you could say. So what I do is I usually just have a very messy moment where I dip the new wick in the current melt pull of the wick that is not working. And then I let that one kind of set out, hang out until I've extinguished the, the tester, make sure that the wax solidifies again, remove it with the pliers like I showed you guys, and then I replace it with the new primed wick. Um, that's really important because otherwise, if you're putting just a dry piece of wood in there, um, it's gonna burn a little hotter and it's just gonna not give you the best test results that you'd want. I want you to think of it as a fresh pour each time that you test a wick. So if you guys have any questions about this or things that you would like to run by me or things that even work for you when you're testing wicks, please leave them in the comments below. Y'all know how much I love to connect with you guys. And I hope that this was helpful. I know I steered a little bit away from the business and marketing side of things, but you know, I got to give the people what they want. And this is what you guys had asked for in other comments. If you're looking to connect, um, get some one-on-one -on -one consulting or mentorship around candles, business of candles, what to do next, please check out my 30 for 30. I've absolutely been enjoying them and I know that it's really hard to ask for help, but I promise you guys, um, it's so well worth it, if not just to get out of your own head and to speak things into existence. And check out some of my other videos. I always want your guys' feedback. I wanna know what direction to take this channel because I'm learning along with you guys. So I really appreciate all the support and subscribe if you haven't already. That's what we have to say. Thanks guys so much and have a great rest of your day.